This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The NBA has its final slate before the All-Star break tonight. Just a three-game offering, but then we have the All-Star game festivities coming up this weekend. The three-point contest, of course. We got Steph versus Sabrina. All that going on this weekend in the NBA. So we got Tom Vecchio on for today, breaking down his bets across the NBA for tonight and then taking a look forward to this weekend. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned, by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. He, of course, is the host of the Daily ISO, our daily NBA podcast, over on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy podcast feed. Tom, no podcast for you tomorrow. You get a little bit of a break uh, via the All-Star break. So how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Yeah, no podcast tomorrow, no uh, podcast the next few days and next week. But we do have a very exciting weekend of, of action, uh, not only the game on Sunday, which, of course, feature probably no defense but uh the i would say the skills comps and these uh you know the events are far more exciting than the game do you have a favorite event across all-star weekend uh it used to be the slam dunk just because of the excitement get the format has changed they've kind of narrowed down the field which i don't love uh it's got to be the three point just okay. see, seeing players knock down shots is always great Okay, well, that's the most robust event for, from a betting perspective, too, because there are a lot of ways to uh, handicap that one. So we'll talk about that event later on, uh, get Tom's read on the three-point contest, and much more here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We had Dr. Nick Giffen of the Action Network on yesterday, breaking down the Daytona 500, his overall betting process for that, where he's seeing some value across uh, this weekend's race, and much more. Tomorrow, Austin Cass is on with us to some EPL. I'll talk uh, the non-Cup Series events for NASCAR this weekend as well, all right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed. So go search for that wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe, and if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify as well. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet in all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit the FanDuel app and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official partner, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text OPEN-Y in New York. Now, Tom, before we get into the All-Star break, we do have a three-game slate for tonight, including the Bucks and the Grizzlies on TNT. Any bets for you in this game for tonight? Yeah, let's start off with the Grizzlies uh, player combo. Jaron Jackson over 31.5 points, rebounds, assists combined, sitting at minus 113. Uh, this I, I will say, actually, before we dive into things for getting into the super nitty-gritty details, tonight's slate along with we saw a bit of yesterday, not going to be surprised if some of these star players get ruled out. This is something that we've traditionally seen right before the All-Star break, giving the veterans a little bit of extra day of rest. So I'm not going to be surprised to see that happen. There is one spot which we'll get to right after this, which I want to jump on early due to that fact. So Jaron Jackson, over 31 and a half PRA. Uh, Memphis is just riddled with injuries this year. So he's now their primary usage player up at 30% offensive usage rate. Uh, Milwaukee, they've been struggling on defense even since Doc Rivers took over, and they're fourth in the league in offensive pace. Jaron Jackson, uh, Jackson, Memphis, they're 18th in pace. So they're playing up in pace. He's their primary usage guy. 
I'm not going to be surprised if Atentacumbo sits tonight. Should make his rebounding path that much easier. It's something that he's always been good at, uh, pushing towards a double-double. And there's no reason that he shouldn't be having his normal 25-6-3 and three kind of game tonight is essentially what we should be getting. And maybe uh, playing some against some backups is also what I'm highly anticipating. So it sounds like because of the situation the Grizzlies are in where playoffs are, uh, you know, not the, the odds. Yeah, they're not happening. Does that allow you to feel OK about Jackson because they're so dependent on him? Or is their playoff positioning concerning to the point where they could sit him or because they don't really need care about the second half? Does that kind of ensure that he'll be out there despite the fact this is the final game before the break? Yeah, he's I mean, there's no indication that he will be setting. He I mean, I wouldn't have that that worry until the end of the season, but he's yeah. just out there every night. He is just their guy. If they want to have anything close to a competent team, he has to be out there because he's by far their best player right now. So it's just, we're rolling with the best option on the worst, one of the worst teams in the league, but it, he just has to be out there. Like hit yeah. them not having him out there is like, I don't know if there's like rules against them being like a non-competitive team or <laughs> up, like tanking openly, but yeah. that's what borderline what it would be. Right. Okay, so Jaron Jackson, PRA bet over 31 and a half, minus 113 is where Tom is going for the Bucks and the Grizzlies. Two more games across the NBA for tonight, Warriors and Jazz, Wolves and Blazers. Anything stand out to you across those two games, Tom? That would be with the Warriors and Jonathan Kaminga over 19 and a half points. It's minus 118. Uh, Steph Curry has been on fire as of late, knocking down threes uh, at an even higher rate than he normally does. They're on the second night of a back-to-back. This is a major concern for me. That And Draymond Green left last night, concussion, he came back. If Draymond Green and Steph Curry both don't play tonight, it's not going to shock me one bit. So the Kaminga line is 19 and a half right now. If they get ruled out, that line's not going to be 19 and a half come 6, 7 o'clock, whatever it is. So he is – John Kaminga has really stepped up to be, I'm going to say, a bit of a secondary scorer for them because Clay Thompson's having a, a pretty bad year, you know, a, according to his standards. So Kaminga would be the primary usage guy if Steph Curry is out. So 19 and a half is probably not going to stay there, even if hypothetically this wasn't the game before the all-star break. Right. We're, we're dealing with a 239 over under it, two teams, in the top nine leading off into pace. It's a two point spread. We're still in an awesome game environment objectively, even if everyone is fully healthy. So you'd be okay with this one. Even if I told you right now that Curry and uh, Draymond both play this game. Yeah. Totally. Okay. It's like, I'm not worried about Utah's defense in right. any way. Even if teams weren't on back-to-backs, they both were on back-to-backs. Even if that wasn't the case, everyone's full rest, everything, I would still be comfortable with Kaminga pushing over 20 points. Okay, so that number right now is 19 and a half over his minus 118 for Kaminga. Potential for that to increase should we get news on Steph and Draymond, but based on what Tom is saying, Kaminga could be a value regardless. So across the NBA for tonight, it's Jaron Jackson over 31 and a half PRA minus 113 and Jonathan Kaminga over 19 and a half points. That is minus 118. Now, Tom, we're going to look at the actual specific markets for NBA All-Star Weekend here in a second, but... If people have not bet these events in the past, you know, given that we've had a lot of states add legalized betting since then, it's, you know, a lot of people probably are betting these for the first time. What should they keep in mind? Um, anything in terms of process wise to consider before placing bets on these festivities? Uh, I, I have bet on them before. Process wise, I would say, you know, hardcore stats like don't matter as much. It's obviously. It, it, the event obviously has a, a ton going on. So just because if you look at like the three point contest, you can't just say, Oh, this player has the highest three point percentage this year. Right. Therefore, he's the best shooter. There's obviously a lot of extra factors going into it. So process wise, I think we need to take that down. It's, it's similar to the home run derby. Like objectively the best right. home run hitter isn't always going to win. the home I have run to consider derby. like their weight and stuff like that for the home run derby, which is annoying. <laughs> like that's not a stat. That's just a number, right? Like these players swinging, 30 times at max strength right. is not something that we normally see. So, you know, and then players like, oh, just because he's having a down here in three point, he's obviously being contested on three points. So there's so much going into it. So process wise, we have to scale back like the actual hardcore stats. If you want to take into account that, oh, maybe someone's in their their home city, they're playing. In the, that's something you could do. But again, that we can't really quantify that every single time. Right. So I would say scale back your units in terms of how much you're betting. And just understand that this is a, a fan event. There's there's hype around everything. So 
keep that in mind. And the amount of concentration players put into it will vary pretty wildly because of that stuff you mentioned. So right. I think in general, there's a lot more uncertainty. So it is wise, like you said, to lower your overall unit allocation and stuff like that in order to account for the fact this is a uh, this is more so just for fun. Right. So you mentioned you like the three point contest. Let's take a look at that now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Damian Lillard is the favorite. He is plus 370, followed by Tyrese Halliburton at plus 440. Any value for you in the outright markets for this three-point contest? So there's no value on Dame. Uh, he's also having a, a pretty tough year from three. He's still taking a ton of shots, but it's not as good. This The event this weekend is in Indianapolis, so Halliburton is on his home court. We, we have to do account for that. Uh, for me, the value would be actually going – all the way to the bottom with Donovan Mitchell at plus 950 because, you know, we're, we're accounting for this variance. We're accounting for something that's uncertain. So I don't want to be going to the shortest odds. I want to go into a player that we know can hit shots. And again, just because he hits it at this rate and a player is hitting it 2% higher doesn't really matter. We know that Carlton Town is actually very good. So Donovan Mitchell would be my number one and Jalen Brunson would be my number two. And that's where I want to be starting because, again, I'm going to be shooting for uh, a quarter unit play, whatever it might be, on players that obviously knock down plenty of threes to begin with. And I also like the fact that he's on a, a rival home court that he maybe want to be playing spoiler a little bit. So, I, I'm so again, Don, I'm taking in the fun aspect into it as well. Yeah. Donovan Mitchell plus 950 right now. Brunson is 7-1. to one. What leads you to Mitchell there? I know, obviously, the – Long odds are obviously pretty enticing, and he's had a, a good year overall, willing to take some three-pointers, pretty good three-point shooter in general. What is the key thing that puts Mitchell over the top for you to make him your favorite bet here? He's just a player that I think he's ready for the spotlight in, in terms of being a star, and he's always kind of embraced it when he was in Utah and now he's in Cleveland. And I I, I just like the odds the most point. There's really nothing more to it than that, that – I don't want to be taking, you know, a big man like Carlton Towns. I don't want to be dropping down and taking what should be the favorite of Lillard or Halliburton. So I'm just going for for the most plus money at this point. Okay. So that's Mitchell at plus nine fifty. Brunson is seven to one. What puts you on him as being your secondary option here? It's I think he's just going a little bit overlooked. Like if he was at five to one, it wouldn't be that good, but he has been the main offensive carry for the Knicks. I also love the fact that he was snubbed from being an all-star starter. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, he has been on fire, unbelievable yeah. scoring. So if we fold that into, it's like, hey, he wants to prove that he can win an NBA three-point contest. He should have been an all-star starter. Let's roll with that narrative as well. The best narrative is an angry player narrative, and you see it in the NBA all the time post All Star uh, starters announcements. So Jalen Brunson carrying the revenge against the voters exactly. all the way into this contest. Yes. Okay. Now it's not just the winning market for the three point contest. There's also like 16,000 other markets you could bet on for the three point contest. So after parsing through those, Tom, anything stand out as being a value to you? Yeah, for me, I'm going to be still rolling with Donovan Mitchell round one score over 19 and a half because that's what he would need to advance. So regardless of who you're interested in, like if you like Trey Young at, at five and a half to one, you should also be interested in his round one score, right? You should also be interested in some of the alt markets of him to hit uh, what is it, 20 plus, 22 plus, 24 plus, because if you think he can win, he obviously has to have this amount in order to advance. If you look back at winning scores over the past few years, we're generally sitting around mid to high 20s of 26, 27, 28, maybe 29. So if you like him to advance, he can't have not 18, 17 made threes and advance to the second round. That's not going to happen. So Regardless of who you're interested in, you should probably correlate with the round one score and you should probably continue to sprinkle quarter unit, tenth of a unit, whatever you're doing on a 22 plus, 24 plus score as well. Okay. So uh, looking at the alternate markets here uh, for the first round, uh, right now, Mitchell plus 135 to get to 22 plus points. To get to 24 plus points, Mitchell is at uh, plus 240. But the 19 and a half minus 130. It is that is a lot of juice to lay on that. So if you're looking at these markets, do you prefer to go with the minus 130 or do you want to go more so with the alt markets? Mitchell, or is it a ladder situation? It's a ladder situation. Okay. Okay. Because if I'm ultimately betting on him to win, he's going to need to accomplish X, Y, and Z in order to get there. So I, I'm fine with minus 130. Like yeah. that that's just me. I yeah. Value is value. Sure. Yeah, value is value. So 
I wouldn't play past there though. But again, yeah. it's it's just the fact that I'm correlating his win, and if he does win, he's going to accomplish all these things along the way. Okay, so Mitchell is also plus four ten to get twenty six plus points. Uh, in the first round. So consider a ladder situation uh, with Donovan Mitchell across the first round, but also uh, especially if you are into him from an outright perspective to win this uh, event at yes. plus 950. A lot of other events going on this weekend, Tom. Any other bets you like across the All-Star festivities? Yeah, that would be if we go to the dunk contest, and it's a, along the same situation. If you think a player can win, you should be looking to his score You know that he's going to be advancing. Mac McClung to repeat as a champion is minus 190. I actually don't think I have the uh, dunk contest here in Illinois. Okay, so uh, Mac McClung is minus 190 for dunk contest. Jalen Brown is plus 420. Jacob Toppin is plus 600. Jaime Hawkins is plus 650. So minus 190 to win an all-star event in any sport to me is crazy. I mean, I'm never going to, with something that has this much variance, I'm never going to lay that kind of price. But if you do like him to repeat, you should just be looking at his total score over. Or if you like another player to win, you should be looking at their total first round score over. So it's the same situation as with the three point contest. If you think Jaime Hawkins, the long shot is going to be advancing. Well then him having, over 92 and a half as his first round is required for him to advance in theory. So that's, that's the route that I would go. If you like the long shots correlated with their first round scores as well. Okay. And Hakez plus six fifty. Do you think he has a juice to overcome McClung here? Or is that more of a, uh, more of a step too far for you? It's probably a step too far. The realistic sure. answer is Jalen Brown. Yeah. The re- he, he's shown his, his ability, um, you know, Mac McClung is he's ultimately like a, a G League up and down kind of guy. Yeah. He's not a tremendous dunking skill. I mean, he won it. Oh, last yeah. Year. Mixtape is sick. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, laying, laying minus 190 is insane. Right. So I would never do that for a home run derby or any type of contest. No. So, you know, Jalen Brown, I think, is the realistic answer. And as the event goes on, I don't know if they'll have round two scores or whatever it might right. be head to head type of score situation. But if you're on board with Brown, just roll with him each step along the way. Yeah. So Jalen Brown plus 420 right now. Brown's first round score uh, over 94 and a half is minus 114. And then, of course, you can uh, keep checking on him as the event goes along as well. So just in general, what Tom was saying there is try to find correlated markets to the situations in which you think that a, a player is a value and identify, are there other ways I could bet this person in addition to potentially betting their outright? So I think that just makes a lot of sense, not just for the All-Star weekend, but also just in general. And then uh, real quick for the All-Star game MVP, ah, if, if you have that market. I do. I had to Fair. like backdoor change the URL to get it to be right. Connecticut to show the All-Star. I don't know why I can't bet the dunk contest here, but I don't think I can. So my theory on All-Star game, especially in the M- NBA, is do not want veteran players. They often defer. They've been there. 10 times, 12 times, whatever it is, they defer to some younger players to show, you know, to show their skill. So there's two options, one from the East, one from the West. From the East, Tyrese Halliburton, 16 to one on his home court. Okay. Right. We, we can play into the narrative. Halliburton has been great this year. He's constantly piling up 12, 14 assists, it seems like every single game. He's also in the three point contest. We know he can score. He's been pulling up from half court. He's going to be throwing alley oops. He's going to be dropping 20 and 12, 2015. Because the game's gonna have 300 points, whatever it is. Right? Because that's I think it's like 360. Yeah, the total is 360. (laughs) 360. So he, Halliburton having 30 and 15 is actually not that crazy based on the game environment. So Halliburton from the East, and then right next to him in the West would be SGA, Shea Gilgis, Alexander, because he's also a player that is, I think he's plus 250 right now to win the MVP. He's uh, second or third when it comes to the overall season MVP. So He's having a great year. He's a player that can also score, can also pile up the assist. He can knock down shots from half court. So don't go with LeBron. Don't go with Tentacumpo. They've done this before. LeBron deferring to some of the younger stars is something that we have seen actually over the past few years. And I actually have interest in LeBron points under, you know, Tentacumpo points under, Durant points under. Some of those, if we get those lines for the actual game, that's where I want to be going. Okay, so we're buying into the young guys, buying the home court oh, narrative see. with Halliburton 16 to 1 and SGA 14 to 1 to win the All Star Game MVP. Sounds like it should be a pretty fun weekend out there in Indy. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, starts off and then like the skills comp, these are, these are a little bit too much to dig into with the players, yeah. the rising stars game actually on it's on Friday night. That actually should be the most competitive game. Okay. Uh, is where the, probably the, the best viewing experience will be. And then Sunday we'll have 400 points or whatever. And then what draws you towards the rising stars game? Oh, uh, it's just like the young players, they're there to prove some of them are the G league ignite players. So they're going to be like, this is just their their showcase, you know, to f- take their first step into stardom. Yeah. Okay. So that is on Friday, uh, eight p or nine p.m. Eastern for the Rising Stars tournament, which should be a fun one as well. Should be a fun weekend overall. Obviously, Daytona 500 first, but we'll talk about the NBA All Star festivities number two on that list. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Find his work on the Daily ISO every weekday uh, on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. And of course, find Tom over on Fandor Research. Tom, a pleasure as always. Enjoy the All Star weekend. Thanks for having me. All right. You can find me on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim Dotsonis. And check out FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Back once again tomorrow, breaking down some EPL and some more NASCAR stuff. We'll talk to all of you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.